Hello and welcome. My name is Matt Reynolds. I'm the theater manager and resident lighting sound designer at New Mexico State University's Department of Theater Arts and the ASNMSU Center for the Arts. Uh, I'm recording these videos uh, as a way of helping to pre-train uh, high school students on their way here for the uh, New Mexico High Desert High School Theater Festival uh, that will be held here in mid-October of this year. Um, so I'm going to walk you through the technical support areas and technical support letter, as well as the lighting summary and how the lighting console works. I will be giving you the easy stuff, simple stuff first, and then working towards more advanced or complicated things um, so that you can go through these videos and practice them as many times as you want and look at them as many times as you want. And you can email me questions if you have them at mattcren at uh, nmsu.edu. That's M-A-T-C-R-E-Y-N at nmsu.edu. Um, so, uh, if you look at your lighting, uh, your technical support letter, you'll see that we are providing um, certain elements for your staging, just so that they're there, so you don't have to transport simple things like chairs and tables. Um, so we are providing four black armless chairs, it's what we call orchestra chairs, um, as well as a, a three foot six inch by three foot six inch square plastic folding table, uh, a six foot rectangular table, it's also plastic, um, a three foot six inch diameter round table that is wood, um, that is a little bit heavier, uh, a couch, um, two uh, steel frame platforms. These are four foot by eight foot and they stand about 5.5 inches off the ground in total height, uh, as well as four rolling flats. These rolling flats are three foot six inches wide by six foot nine and a half inches tall. And that is that flat is raised uh, uh, five and a half inch high on its uh, casters, its swivel casters. Uh, you, you will need to provide anything beyond these basic pieces. Um, I'm going to walk you around through the space and through some of the areas, the, the loading dock, the, the, the stage, the dressing room, things like that. Um, on your performance day, you'll have 35 minutes in the dressing room to prepare, followed by 10 minutes to get upstairs to the stage. Trust me, it does not take 10 minutes to get to the stage. Um, followed by 35 minutes of performance time, uh, followed by uh, 10 minutes to clear the dressing room, and another 35 minutes of constructive response uh, from their respondents. Uh, an NMSU technical crew member will guide your group between the stage and the dressing rooms so that you don't get lost, so it's easy to find your way to and from the stage. There are signs posted everywhere as well, um, but one of our crew members will guide you to and from the stage. All right, so this is how we get from the stage to the dressing rooms. Stage, up stage right door, into the hallway, that's this hallway, past the green room, and into this stairwell. Two dressing rooms, 19 and 20. Level zero, the dressing rooms, 19 and 20. Going past the locker and to the dressing rooms. Here are the dressing rooms. And that's how we get to the dressing rooms. Dressing rooms do have audio and video monitors of the stage. So you can see what's going on at all times from the stage. To green room and backstage right, going the opposite direction. There are maps posted everywhere, all past the lockers. To green room and backstage right. Now we're back on level one. The green room, backstage right. 
past the green room. And here we are, to backstage left and right. And we're on backstage right. And that's how you get to and from the dressing rooms. A member of NMSU technical crew will also guide you. The loading dock for the facility is located on the southeast corner of the building. Uh, however, do not enter from enter the driveway from Espina. You'll have to enter through the parking lot on University. If you uh, go on University, um, it's about a block east of the Center for the Arts, uh, or a block towards the mountains, if that helps, uh, or towards I-25 or away from I-10. Um, there's a turn-in for a parking lot. There's a sign there that says Center for the Arts drop-off. Um, that turn-in is also across the street from where there will hopefully be a completed uh, Chick-fil-A across the street um, at that point. Uh, you'll turn in there and follow that path to the right down a driveway behind the facility. Do not enter the dock space until it is your designated time frame to load in. Um, there is a waiting zone that is before the dock itself um, that you can park your truck and sit there as long as you're parked away from the building. Again, uh, uh, so that we maintain a fire lane for fire crews in case that is necessary. Um, then during your load-in time, um, so you can wait there 10 minutes prior to your load-in time, up to 10 minutes. So you have those that 10-minute time frame to get to the waiting area. Uh, and then you have that 10-minute time to be in the dock area after that. Uh, there are four openings between the loading dock and the stage itself. Uh, the smallest one is the loading dock itself, which is 14, in, 14 feet 3 inches wide and 12, inch, uh, 12 feet high, and that is sits two, point, uh, two and a half feet off the ground. So a regular pickup truck is an ideal height uh, for loading into uh, onto our dock. Um, be aware the loading dock space is very difficult to navigate for larger vehicles. It's really designed for pickup trucks, not for you know 25 foot box trucks or 53 foot loading um, uh, transport trucks. Um, uh, also, it slopes diagonally southwest away from the dock. Uh, that may be something to keep in mind with uh, how you pack your materials. The loading dock door itself um, is 15 foot wide by 12 feet high. And the sound doors, there's two of them between the uh, paint shop and the, and the stage. The two sound doors are 14 foot 4 inches wide and 17 foot 8 inches high. So, as I said before, your minimum space that you have to clear is 14 foot 3 inches wide by 12 feet high, and it's 2.5 uh, feet off the ground. Uh, we do not have dance ramps, dock plates, forklifts, airport tugs, anything else that um, would support your loaded. The stage itself, the acting area, is approximately 16 foot 8 inches deep by 38 feet uh, 10 inches wide. There's a short area, uh, apron area, located downstage of the proscenium uh, that is curved inward, that is curved upstage at the center, um, but it is not lit. It is not lit there, so do not perform there. Um, there will not be a way to see people unless you have a fall spot or special on that, on that place. Uh, the black main stage travel, travel will be closed during all performances to allow room for uh, the storage on the stage. There will be six storage squares on stage, just upstage of the mid-stage traveler. Um, uh, the Traveler itself will be operated by a member of the NMSU technical crew, and um, uh, there will be an onstage quick change area far upstage left, made out of uh, more of those uh, rolling flats, the flat, uh, the big black rolling flats. Not the same ones that you can use for your scenes, different ones, um, just so that you're aware. Um, there will also be a rolling rack, an empty rolling rack there. Uh, the rolling rack must be completely empty before and after your performance time. You cannot store costumes there. You can't put, put them there during your load-in. It is just for performance time. Um, uh, you may not enter, enter or interfere with another uh, storage square at any time. That means walking through it to put your stuff in your square, even if it looks empty. Um, don't cross through it just to put your stuff on stage or spike things on stage. Um, just don't enter that the any, any of the other squares at all. Um, we had a couple of close calls last time, people walking through an area, and there was scenic elements that were small and low to the ground that were painted black and hard to see, and we almost had a couple of trip-ups and crushing of, of materials. So please stay out of other squares. Um, people do not need to fit in the square. Crew, cast, people don't need to fit in the square. Um, it's just your set and props. Um, you, um, uh, all set and props must fit in that 10 by 10 square, and if 
few if you if a certain amount of height is necessary yes the the, the height that's available is about 20 feet um, to the to the pipes um, uh, for where they'll be hanging for at that, at that time um, you must bring your own cast crew scenery costumes Edison extension cords that's regular extension cords what you're used to seeing in your wall at home those you must bring yourself you do not have enough to provide for everyone um, uh, you must bring your own makeup and bring your own makeup personnel. If you have people who want their makeup done or need people to get, uh, help them put on their makeup, that is all on you. Um, do, do, do. Um, <laughs> we will provide spike tape uh, for you to spike the acting area uh, during your tech and performance. Um, do not remove your own spikes because they may be underneath another school's spikes or worse, even worse, you could confuse your color spike with somebody else's spikes. So do not remove any of the spikes. You can put them down, whatever spikes you need from our ga gathering of tape. We're going to try and color code it as best as possible so that um, there's not any color overlaps. So it's easy to tell which one's yours. Um, uh, so we will remove the spikes for you after each cohort of performances. Um, you may not access your storage square except during your load in, load out tech and performance. So don't put your makeup there, don't put your costumes there, any other prep items that you require in the dressing room or anything that you need outside of your performance time. The, um, because you cannot get to your storage square to say, grab your costume before going downstairs to your dressing room, to the dressing room time. You, you have to keep those somewhere else. Um, there will be a show performing before you so you can't come on stage and pull stuff out of your square. You cannot enter the stage well other shows are performing. Uh, we cannot provide, unfortunately, we cannot provide storage for your costumes or makeup, so please bring them to your dressing room during your appointed dressing room time. Uh, the fly rail. The grand drape will remain open the entire time um, for time reasons and uniformity. Um, we cannot accommodate any flying scenery or backdrops due to uh, limited setup and takedown, takedown times. Um, the black state mid-stage traveler and the projection screen will be operated by a member of the NMSU technical crew, one of my crew, uh, which brings us to projection. When projection is visible, when the projection screen is flown in to be visible on stage, it is a 16 foot by 10 foot front projection screen that hangs on center and it hangs four feet down stage of the mid-stage traveler uh, on center um, with the bottom edge at seven foot six above the stage. The bottom edge is five, six feet tall, which I'm not. It's about here. Um, the screen will only be flown in for performances that ask for it. If you don't ask for it, we won't fly it in. It'll just be clear black stage. You won't see the projection screen. Um, um, schools choosing to use projection may only use PowerPoint and must provide their own operator to operate PowerPoint. We have PowerPoint 2007 on our uh, show control computer. And um, uh, so PowerPoint files uh, must, or the files themselves or drop Dropbox or some other sort of cloud storage link to them uh, must be sent to me, emailed to me at my email address by October 12th at the latest. Um, that's so that I can download those, get them on the show control computer, test them, make sure they work, make sure that there's no errors or glitches um, and that they fit on the screen. Uh, depending on um, different input media, you may have up some black bars on, on the sides or on the tops. Um, the screen itself is a 16 by 10 resolution or aspect ratio. So if you uh, design your show, so if you're in PowerPoint, you click on the design tab under page setup, you can do drop down to on screen uh, 16 colon 10, and that will be the layout for, for our system. Um, submissions after October 12th will not be accepted. Even if it's the same thing, you just changed a little thing or updated something. I'm sorry, but we cannot accept it after October 12th. Um, because of time reasons and, uh, and complicating other shows and so on. Once I receive your uh, PowerPoint, I'll load in the computer, make only necessary adjustments. If I see that there's something screwed up and I can fix it, then I will fix it and I will take a picture of it on the screen over the stage for you to see. So I'll take a picture of it and send it to you um, so that you see that, yes, your PowerPoint's in our computer, it works, it's on stage. Um, the projector may not be refocused, it, uh, it cannot receive a different input source, um, because it changes the entire focus of the projector and its alignment, um, and it cannot rear project. Uh, the show control computer cannot be used to access the internet or download from a USB drive or a disk, so you really must email me link or email the link to me, either the file or the link, 
um, your PowerPoint file before October 12th um, because you will not be able to upload it once you are here. Um, the sound system includes the house system, main house system, as well as a wireless mic um, and um, a CD player. The wireless mic has a switch. If you need to operate the wireless mic yourself, there's a switch, a very tiny switch at the bottom of the wireless mic. Push it to the side and you might have to push it in a little bit for it to turn on. Once it turns on, you'll see the screen lights up. There we go. And it has that information on it. Okay. Um, similarly, to turn it off, flip to the other side. Okay. Um, if you would uh, rather your mic be operated from the uh, sound console to be turned on and off from the sound console, then the sound console is here in the sound booth. Here's our sound console. Um, CD player volume is adjusted here where it says CD and the microphone will, will label differently. So it's very simple and it's just one, but it will be volume operated from here. Okay, And muting and unmuting is, is that. Turning it off is off. This turns it on. So green light, or sorry, the, red, the orange light means it's on. No light means it's off. Okay. Um, same with the CD player. If the light is on, it is on. If the light is off, it is off. Okay. Um, which brings us to the CD player. CD player is in the same room. Um, it is your standard Tascam 200IB uh, CD player. All right. Step back a little bit. All right. Uh, on here you have your readout. Um, it can take a dock from a classic iPod. That is not a lightning charger. That is uh, for a classic iPod charge. If you wanted to plug in an iPod there. Um, uh, CD open and close button opens and closes the CD tray uh, so that you can get the CD out. Then we have the usual controls, which is play. You notice I press play and it's not playing immediately. Now it is playing. Once you load in the CD, you should press play and then pause immediately so that it's prepped. And then you can search to your track, whichever track it may be. So if it's track two, then the number would be paused. If it's paused and it's ready, it'll be blinking. So I can press play and it'll start immediately. Okay, pause pauses it. Stop, stops the CD altogether. Search goes forward and back as necessary. If your specific needs uh, for sound vary from this list, then contact me and we'll see what we can work out. Um, uh, uh, if you have recorded sound effects, it's recommended uh, that you burn them onto a CD as a backup. Uh, or and or bring a backup on a jump drive. Um, please test your CD before uh, before you get here and also during your tech time. Please test your CD for for skips. Uh, there are ClearCom headsets uh, for communication uh, to for between all of the uh, stage positions. Um, they're provided at the light board, sound board, uh, downstage right, downstage left, which is where the stage manager lives. Uh, the follow spots um, and the um, projection operator um, and other places as necessary. If other places are needed, then uh, I need to be told beforehand um, or during your tech. Um, and we'll set it up during your tech if we need to. Your tech time is a very short time, so it's best if I know as much about what you need set up other than the standard derivations uh, sooner rather than later. Please remember to uh, follow the college policies, uh, the department policies, which are no food or drinks in the theater. Um, this includes backstage and on stage. Bottled water is allowed in dressing rooms and hallway areas, not on stage. Um, at no time should there be any glitter, sequins, whipped cream, state shaving cream, or wet glue, or any other sticky substance that's hard to clean. Um, the using such a such an item can result in disqualification from the one at competition. Uh, any special effects must be pre-approved by uh, us here. That means, uh, but we are already saying no to open flames, no open flames, no smoke, no pyrotechnics, including cigarettes, e-cigarettes, vapes, and the like. Okay. Um, I look forward to working with each of you uh, in this uh, endeavor. So please forward your questions to me email, by email uh, as soon as possible. And we'll see you soon. All right, welcome back. Now we're going to talk about lighting for the theater festival. 
Uh, the stage itself is divided up lighting-wise into 10 acting areas. That's five across in two rows. So there are areas one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So those are our ten areas. Those areas we can light easily. If you want to grab them just as one, you can grab the faders on the left side of the, side of the board that are labeled one through ten, and you can move them up together to get an even, even bright wash. All the way at full is very bright. Take them down a little bit, a little dimmer, a little more moody, very dim. You can get even illumination, but still be visible. Those are our 10 areas. So if you want just a simple, bring up some lights, just grab all of those and put them up at whatever level you want. Um, at full, at, this is at 50, um, this is at 25, this is at, um, right now the work lights are on. In addition, we have control of these. Um, we also have them as their directions of light. So the front wash, so everything from the front, everything from the back. Every, these are all the LEDs. The LEDs are down lights, and they can be any one of a million colors. So it could be red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and so on. Um, and any color in between. We can program that requires um, more specific control. Um, if you just want them on just to create some general color, then it's on the fader on the board. The other faders that we have are high, uh, high from stage left, the high angle lights from stage left, which are in a daylight blue, and high angle from stage right, which is an amber. Then we have organic texture from stage left, which is a leaf pattern from stage left and and a triangular pattern from stage right is also available. Those are the faders that we have divided up by directions of light. The other faders we have are for the house lights, for the work lights, uh, and for the rehearsal wash, which is just even lighting on the stage in the first row or so of the audience. Um, it's general, white, and even. Um, but it's not a lot of lights, so it's not a full coverage. It's just a general wash of, of, of flat white light. In addition to these, you may request up to one additional special. Um, uh, so we can hang one extra instrument wherever you like, uh, within reason. Um, you may designate the preferred placement um, on where the specials will be focused, but we have to hang and focus it during your tech time, which is limited. Um, uh, the NMSU technical crew, my crew, will uh, hang, circuit, and focus it for you during the alarm tech time. But it can only be hung, circuited, and focused during the alarm tech time. Uh, provide your own uh, gel color, or you can, uh, which would be a six and a quarter inch uh, square piece of gel, um, or uh, NMSU can provide the closest thing to whatever color you're requesting uh, from our uh, clinical gel stock. To be safe, you may wish to bring your own gel. Uh, we have two Phoebus Mighty Arc 2 spots, which change color, iris, fade in and out, and blink in and out as manipulated by the spot operators. These operators must be your own students who will be una unable to perform other duties during the show. They can't run spot and also run lights or sound or things like that. Uh, the colors that are in those uh, fall spots are R34 flush pink, R52 light lavender, RO4 medium bastard amber, R62 booster blue, R26 light red, and R10 uh, medium yellow, as well as no color or white. Um, uh, I, Matt Reynolds, and my crew will be present for all technical rehearsals and performances to provide technical support. Uh, what that means is we are there in case anything goes wrong, to answer questions as necessary, but we will not program the board for you. We cannot touch the lighting console for you. We can only tell you what to touch if you're trying to acquire a specific channel. Um, the full light plot and magic sheet are also provided. Um, under no circumstances will anyone from your school, including students, teachers, or others, uh, will be allowed to hang or refocus lights. Um, no one is allowed to operate the fly system except for an NSU technical crew, and you will not be allowed to change gel color except for your special um, or board controlled color changing fixtures and a predetermined fall stop colors. Provided for you is an example of a magic sheet. 
is a bit more technical, uh, a bit more advanced, um, but it provides you the channels. Those are the specific numbers for each light, each instrument that is hitting each area from each angle. Um, and it's divided up visually by area on the magic sheet. At the top center of that document is also uh, the general grouping of the channels. So channels 1 through 10 are the front wash. Uh, 11 through 20 are the no-color downwash. Uh, 21 through 30 are the LED downs, and so on. We also have it listed in groups for you as well. So the front wash is group 11. The down no-colors are group 12. LEDs are group 13, and so on. Uh, color palettes uh, are pre-recorded, but you can choose any any color that you want from a color picker. Uh, but the pre-recorded color palettes are red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, cyan, magenta, and white. Uh, note that white is different from the uh, no color in the LEDs because the no color is a little bit more of a lavender. Um, and so there is a separate, choose, uh, separate selection to make the LEDs white. Uh, there's also a mover available. That's, our, that's channel 61. And the mover is, can be used as a refocusable special. It is hung on the first electric uh, so that it is easily able to reach um, all of the uh, performance areas on the stage, um, and I can tell you how to program it. I can walk you through the steps of programming it, of uh, turning it which way you want it to go. All right, now, so let's talk through um, the specifics of the console um, uh, with regards to what you see and what you can do specifically. So I've shown you, what you how you can run the board just with faders, so you don't have to push any buttons or touch anything. You can just bring up specific areas or specific directions of light um, easily with the faders, um, but if you want specific direction, specific channels, or if you want to do any color changing, then you'll need to start typing in buttons. So let's walk through the ION itself. Uh, the, our console is an ETC ION with uh, the software was updated, I believe, this summer, um, so it's relatively updated. The, there are two screens in front of you. One is the uh, channel screen or tombstone screen. This screen has all of our channels, patch channels. The channels that are just uh, uh, regular conventional instruments uh, have no extra information to them. Channels 41 through 60 on this picture you'll see have extra asterisk and a longer tombstone um, because they have more controllable properties. It's not just on off. It's actually uh, also has uh, color palettes or uh, zones of color that you can choose from. Um, same with the mover. On that same screen, you can see what queue you're in at the time, at the very bottom, and at the very bottom below that, you have the tabs for the different displays. Live channel display is the one we're on right now with the tombstones, uh, the channel hookup. Uh, we also have moving light controls, which if you click on moving light controls, it gives you specific control if you type in a specific channel or group of channels that have uh, moving light uh, attributes, such as LEDs or the mover. Uh, the moving light controls gives you uh, specific access to those controls. Um, don't You're not going to mess with patch or group list display or effects. The other screen in front of you is the playback status screen, which has your cue list. Now, every show, uh, every school is going to have a specific zone of cues. Um, so this first school will have cues 100 through 199. The second school will have cues 200 through 299 and so on, with cues 100, 200, 300, and so on being our uh, house lights up for the changeover cues. So uh, you can change anything else, your blackouts, your ups and downs, and, and add up to uh, not quite 100 cues if you're going by integers, but you can go in point cues. So uh, since our cues can go from can be Q100 to 100.01, you really have 10,000 cues to mess with. On your uh, playback status, on the left you see the cue number, then we have our timings, um, our timing uh, for um, intensity up and intensity down. If it's just a time of five, for instance, as we see in, in some of these cues, um, it means that the time it takes for things that are rising in intensity is five seconds, and things that are lowering in intensity takes five seconds. Whereas if we have a split cue, where we want, say, to bring up light in one area quickly, but slowly bring down the light in the other area in the same cue, that would be a split time. So for instance, we could have a split time of one slash five, where 
where it brings up light quickly in a time of one to one area and then brings down the lights that are going down slowly in a time of five. There are also focus, color, and beam time, which you probably won't use, um, and the overall duration of the queue, uh, which is whatever the maximum uh, timing of uh, those interior times are. Uh, flags you're not going to have to worry about. Uh, follow hangs, um, links, loops, curves, and rates you probably won't have to worry about. Um, you can write follow cues um, if you so desire, but I wouldn't recommend it given the time frame you're under. And you can label your cues if you so wish, but um, and if you really want to, I can tell you how to do that, but um, you won't need to. I will label each of the um, cue bases, the, the house lights up cues, um, with the title of what school is the following section. The little triangle in the bottom right corner is the CIA. It opens the uh, central information area. Um, that is where we have file, save, um, open, etc. Let's look at the rest of the board. This is the uh, main faceplate of the ION console. So we've already seen the fader wing. This is the uh, main console, um, which has all the buttons, all the fun buttons to press. Uh, at the left, we have our blackout button, which is disabled, so it won't do anything. The Grandmaster fader, which does work, and that controls not only stage lights, but house lights, backstage lights, etc. So if you bring the Grandmaster down, it, you know, it's going to bring down, down the, the lights everywhere. The XY faders, which say no touchy because we're not set in a um, uh, two-scene preset mode, and we um, don't want you to force complete because it doesn't work so well with data uh, data fixtures. We have our heads-up display, uh, which is a changeable display based on what screen we're on and what uh, record target areas we're in. Um, so right now we're in form. Um, which is uh, one of the controllable sets of attributes for moving lights. So you can see edge and zoom and shutter and diffusion, um, shutter strobe and diffusion, um, and each controlled by these con these encoder wheels. So that page changes based on which of these six buttons are pressed. Um, that is a quick and easy way to control the mover. Um, so if you want to change uh, the zoom to widen the, the mover, you want to press form, and then turn the zoom uh, encoder wheel. If you want to change the color, uh, you press the color one, and you can change the colors based on um, the format of the fixture itself. Uh, so for instance, the LEDs are seven colors, so you'd have, you'd have to page through multiple pages to control all seven attributes um, plus strobe, um, whereas the mover is cyan, magenta, yellow based, so you can control the color for it based on cyan, magenta, and yellow on the encoder wheels up there. Um, same with focus. If you click on focus, that gives you your pan and tilt and fine pan and fine tilt for the mover um, and other fun things. Uh, our soft keys are, are labeled at the bottom of the heads-up display. So right now we see query, address, snapshot, uh, highlight, and assert are currently active. Um, if we ever need to page through more soft keys, it's the more soft keys button right there, which you will probably not ever need. Our displays uh, keys are off, off to the side over here that help us page page through displays, switch between live and blind, um, and tab over to other things such as moving light controls or patch. It's just easier just to click the tab um, or escape to close tabs. Then we get down to our, our main area of playing around. Um, at the bottom left, we see our, um, near the Grandmaster, we see the stop back button and the go button. Uh, go, quite simply, if you record a cue, uh, if you have cues recorded, you press go, and it will execute that cue, that transition, in whatever time you've programmed it to. If you hit go and it's processing and you want to stop, you want to freeze where it is, you hit the stop back button, and it will stop exactly where it is, and it freezes in mid-cue, mid-change. At that point, you can either hit stop back again, in which case it will go back to the previous cue, or you can hit go, and it will complete the cue. Um, so that is useful information for you. Hopefully, you will only ever need to press go once you're have the show programmed. In the center we have our our, our number pad, uh, which is our, our primary way of talking to channels. When we're in live mode, it defaults to thinking in channels. So if we type 1 at 8, enter, it will bring up channel 1 at 80%. So if we hit 1 through 10 at 8, enter, it will bring up channels 1 through 10 which is the front area wash. 
but we can also hit uh, one at full to bring it to full, or we can hit one out. You don't have to hit at in order to take something out. It it's instantly says at zero, uh, enter. So you don't have to hit enter after out, and you don't have to hit at before out. Um, so one out instantly takes it out. Um, otherwise, you have to hit at full or at a specific number if you want to change the intensity. Um, and enter executes whatever you've typed in. To make a split time, you would uh, whatever queue you have selected, say time one slash five to make it go up in the time of one and down in the time of five. Um, or you can just hit time five, being both up five and down five. The plus and minus buttons are not um, plus and minus, they are and and except. So one through 10 plus 12 would be channels one through 10 as well as channel 12 and then do whatever you want to. Uh, whereas one through 10 minus five means you're grabbing channels one through 10 except for channel five. And this is how you can control specific channels. To record a queue, once you've programmed in your levels for however you want them, even if it's just um, on the faders, if you get your look how you want it and say, all right, that's my look, I want that to be my look, I want to take a snapshot of that and record that as a queue, it's very simple. You hit record and it defaults to thinking in queue uh, and you type in the number so you don't have to hit queue. You can press record, type in the number, so record 122, enter. And, and if it's something you haven't recorded before, a queue number you haven't recorded before, it'll record it. Um, if it has, it is something that you've already recorded, it will bring up a bright red indicator that says, are you sure uh, you want to record over this queue? And then you'll hit enter again to execute that, to, to continue recording over that queue. Um, to delete queues, you type delete uh, queue number enter. Um, to change your color palette. So for instance, if you want to change your colors for your uh, LED downs, you can you grab them either by typing group, group 13, or type the channel numbers, channels 21 through 30, color palette, and then you can pick a color palette. So one is red, two is orange, three is yellow, four is green, five is blue, six is indigo, seven is violet, eight is cyan, nine is magenta, and 10 is white. Uh, so you type the color palette, enter, so 21 through 30, color palette 3, enter, puts them in yellow, and then you have to give an intensity, either before or after, it doesn't matter. Uh, 21 through 30, at full, enter. Or 21 through 30, full, enter. Or 21 through 30, at 8, enter. Um, whatever you choose by intensity. And yes, you can change the intensity, you can change the color palette while it's um, still there. Um, they are all controllable attributes. Um, we are not putting in focus palettes, beam palettes. Um, uh, for this particular show um, or intensity palettes so you don't have to worry about those. Um, the other buttons just don't even worry about. Um, they'll just give you a headache. Um, if it's easier to grab your groups, um, if you'd rather grab them by the sub, you can grab it by the sub number. For instance, the LEDs are in sub 13. So you could type sub 13 color palette 5 enter at full enter and you've brought up your LEDs in blue at full. At full. Uh, so you can grab by sub. You can also just press the top button on the fader that you want to choose to choose the sub group, which is the same thing. It's typing group sub. Everything that's in this sub has a group I want to do something to. So you can also, instead of having to type in by the group number or type in by the sub number, you can just push the top button on that particular fader and that will select everything in that subgroup. Another thing we have is the scroll wheel over here. So you can grab groups of channels, say one through 10 at, and then you can just scroll the wheel up to scroll up from zero or scroll it up or down, um, whatever you so choose. Um, and that will scroll it up and down. Uh, to release a channel, uh, this board doesn't have the release button that is an earlier version of ETC Express and Expression boards. Uh, what it has is called Sneak. It's, this, it's right here. Um, so if you want to release really specific things, such as you can type in 1 through 10, Sneak, Enter, and that will release uh, whatever data changes you've done in typing. 
um, to those particular channels um, and release it back to whatever its previous state was, what its current state is if you're in a queue. So if you uh, grab channels 1 through 10 and you say 1 through 10 at full, enter, and you realize, oh, well, that's not the look I want in this queue because and the queue's already built, you can say sneak enter for and whatever's in the command line will be snuck. Um, or you can type it again, 1 through 10, sneak enter, and it'll release just those channels back to whatever their previous state was. So if in the queue they were already recorded as being at 50, and you typed 1 through 10 at full, uh, and saw, oh, well, I don't like that, sneak enter, you can release those specific channels. Just hitting sneak will automatically apply to any channels that are in the command line. This is your command line. Uh, so if you've done something to channels 1 through 10 at full enter, and it shows a little diamond that you've hit enter, uh, if you just hit sneak, it'll automatically refer to whatever channels are already in the command line. If you want to refer to something else, you clear the command line, which if you hit enter and there's a diamond, hit clear once and it'll clear the command line. If you're in the middle of typing something, you'll have to hit clear a bunch of times until you've cleared all the data in your command line. Um, but if you clear the command line and you hit uh, sneak, enter, it'll release anything that's been captured, anything that you've manually changed the, the levels on. It does not release them from the faders. It does not release them from the queues. It just releases any typing changes that you've made for those specific channels or um, that you've made in, in general, including for color palettes, uh, mover locations, anything like that. If it's not recorded already or recorded in the queue, um, then it will release it back to home. All right, and that's it for your training for the ETC Ion Console for how it's going to be prepped for the High School Theater Festival. If you have further questions, please email me at mattcren at uh, nmsu.edu, uh, and look forward to seeing you in October. Have fun.